People wrong with the mind that I've got a vision, I have a vision. And when you ask them to explain the vision they've gotten, they can't explain in details. Hello? What will make you standing among your peers are these things I'm sharing. The foresight. Now quickly, what is the foresight? The foresight talks about linking through a telescope of life to see the future. It's like a telescope. You know what telescope is? Telescope, you can stand there and project far. Am I right? That's what foresight is all about. See, listen. The foresight of your vision gives you confidence. You are standing here, but you know in the next 20 years where you are going to be. Any vision where you don't have the foresight of it is a delusion. Hello? Is the, 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 like the telescope you are seeing. You know, listen to this, you know in the next 30 years, you can rehearse your 30 years. You know where you ought to be. A wise man said, if you don't know where you ought to be, everywhere will look like it. It, it. Does that make sense to somebody here? And that is achieved by foresight. Every genuine vision, every genuine visionaire must have foresight of his vision. Okay, for instance, God have told you, you are going to be a very great businesswoman. Good. Good, great businesswoman is a general word. Anybody can say God have told him or her that she or she is going to be a, good, a great businesswoman. Am I talking to somebody here? But what the foresight shows to you, is show to you the distance that you are going to go. The what? The distance. the distance. For instance, as a pastor, I know where I'm going to cover. And because I know where I'm going to cover, I'm not relaxed at this level. I know I've not started. I'm still warming up. Foresight. Now, what foresight does is that it helps you to make wise choices of associate. Association. Because your association can, can, um, can truncate your foresight, what you've seen. Your association. Am I talking to someone here? You see, the Lord spoke to Paul. Look up everyone. The Lord spoke to Paul. He said, so, 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 why did I, all this other stuff. And he now called him into ministry. He said, you are going to be a great apostle and all that. The first thing God did for Paul was to connect him to one of his disciples. Ananias was a disciple of Jesus. Now, after Paul got connected to Ananias, he never stopped that. The Bible said he now went to identify with the disciples, Peter. That talks about the power of association. Because he had a clear vision from God. Because the calling of Paul was an open vision. At that point, Paul knew that it was Jesus that was speaking. Because when Jesus called him, the next thing Paul responded and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Hello? And the Lord spoke to him, telling him, okay, go to this uh, street, go straight, you're going to meet one of my disciples, his name is Ananias and all that. That talks about identification. That talks about association. Now, what foresight does to you in that vision is that it helps you to make wise choices, wise choice of associate, association. Because no matter how clear your vision is, a wrong association can truncate it. Am I speaking to somebody here? That is why a vision, you must get the foresight of that vision. God has shown you this is where. How, how far will this thing go? Where will this thing take you? That's the foresight. Okay, God said you are going to be an engineer. Where will it take you? God said you are going to do you are going to do music. Where will it take you? Okay, it's going to take me. I'm going to I'm going to sing on a, a, a national TV. I'm going to run concert. I'm going to do shows and all that. That even the president will come. That is the foresight. Am 
Am I speaking to someone? You know how far it will go. Any vision where you don't have the foresight is a delusion. It's an ambition. They teach you vision. Good. But these are intricate components of vision. I command your understanding to open up. Amen. I thought you say better amen here. Amen. Am I blessing somebody tonight? That is how far will the vision take you? That's the foresight. Every vision needs that. Two, every vision needs an insight. There's the foresight, there's the insight. The insight talks about the detail of the vision. Knowing what your vision for light entails. Am I talking to somebody here? So much are details. Say it louder. You see, when you talk about insight, it's just like looking through a microscope. Now, let me explain to you. Look up, everyone. How many of you know what is called microscope? Microscope. Look at your hand. Look at your palm. You are seeing your palm. But do you know that if you put a microscope on it, it will show you details. You can see germs that you can't even see with your optical eyes. Am I right? Now, every vision needs an insight. That detail is called insight. That is, you are sharing your vision with a man, but he can't see. But there is something you are saying that honorable man can see. The visionary is the one with the details of the vision. It has a foresight, and also it must have what? An insight. And what? Am I talking to and what? An insight. An insight. You know. That in a state of your life, this is what you should be doing. That's what inside does. You see people wrong with this uh, mindset. I have a vision. I have a vision. But if they scrutinize your vision, you know that you have not sat down to catch enough uh, correct vision. And that is why I'm here to help you do. After now, you will walk with correct sense. Amen. I thought you say better amen here. Amen. I thought your amen will be stronger and louder than this here. That is every vision need an insight. An insight. It's not enough to say, God, I've said you are going to own a solar company. But what is the detail of that solar company? What are the segments of it? That when somebody brings what is not into you, you know that this one is not part of it. Because what inside does it that it delivers you from trap that looks like an opportunity. Because a wise man said, every open door is not God's door. But how will you know? One of the, th- one of the, one of the blessedness of insight is that it delivers you from error. It delivers you from where? From error. From error. Insight. You got the vision, good. You know the end from the beginning. That's what vision is all about. You have a clear foresight of the vision. Hello? See? (laughs) It was the foresight that Joseph had that could make Joseph to be rejoicing even in the prison. Am I talking to somebody here? Because he knew that at the end, everything will turn together for his worth. Is good. Now let me tell you something. Foresight, inside, are deeper version of vision. They are not things you just teach in a just general class. They are master class of vision. The subject of vision. Because having insight about your vision will take you to do these three things. Look at these three things you must do. One, you, it will take you to intercede for your vision. There are people that have vision, but they don't intercede for the vision. Now, it's in the place of intercession for your vision that God begins to unfold the details to you. And those details are what we call insights. That is, insight can be gotten from the place of prayers. That's one. Two, insight can also be gotten from the place of research and studying. Am I speaking to somebody here? 
That is, can you not see that it's not enough to say God said this, God said that? No. You have to go more, press more. See, that is what I've kept the fathers of old, still fathers. That is what I've kept people like John D. Rocker's fellow organization. See John D. Rocker fella. That is what I've kept Walmart as Walmart in generation to come. Because they had a blueprint of what the vision for Walmart is all about. They have a blueprint of what the vision for Toyota is all about. Now listen today. Dubai is Dubai today because of vision. Not because he's called Dubai. A man caught a vision that this place that is flooded with water can be a touring center for all the world. And he mapped it out and stated the foresight of it. Painted the picture of how that place will look in 20 years time. And after the painting, the painting there is called the foresight. Every vision must have the foresight. The foresight is making the vision flesh for all to see. After then, he has stated what we call the inside, the whereabout, the things you will see. And Dubai is Dubai. The reasons, listen today, if you are going to be an outstanding leader, if you are going to be an outstanding businessman, you must. It's a must. They don't negotiate that. You must have a clear-cut vision for your life. And the third stuff is what called eyesight. The eyesight helps you to see where you are coming from. Because you need to know where you are coming from to be able to arrive at where you are going to. You see, the reason why a lot of people misbehave, they don't know what God has delivered them from. And because they don't know what God has delivered them from and where they are coming from, they tend to misbehave. That is, these three things must be in place. Foresight, insight, and hindsight. Any man that says he has a vision is not a thinker. He's playing the fool. It's not a bad to have a business idea. But you must think on paper because it become, until it becomes flesh in your hand. The wise man said, thinkers are leaders. Thinkers are what? Any church where the leaders don't think, the church can grow. Let me talk to some of the leaders that are here tonight. Church growth is not tied to the set man. Church growth is tied to strategic thinkers that are around the set man. Did you hear what I said? Yes, hear me now. Church growth is not tied to the set. It wasn't Jesus that went on the street to begin to announce, say, I'm Jesus Christ, so come and see me. No. It was one of the persons that had an encounter with him. That is, you can tell if the associates are thinkers. Yes, you can tell. By the result, the church generates. You know, there, there are churches you go, once it's off Sundays, you, you see... People forgot, people just, it will just trip off their mind that they are associate. It will just trip off their mind. Now, the only time they will not know that okay, I'm a leader is when they report again. Church don't grow like that. Church don't grow like that. Churches grow when everyone is committed to the vision of the house. And how you are committed to the vision of the house will also prove how you will be committed to your own vision. Yeah. Receive grace. Amen. I said receive grace. Amen. I said receive grace. Amen. That is where it starts from. That is you must be a thinker. You must be a planner. It's not enough to say we are going to have programs. Are you available to plan? Every successful program you see is a result of planning. Is a result of what? Planning. planning. Nothing just happens. Nobody just wake up. See, your vision can be authentic from God and still fail. And still what? Fail. fail. And still fail. Because you lack the 
thinking and what? Planning. It takes thinking to be outstanding. It takes planning to execute your thoughts. You want to do a concert. You can do a concert that can shut down the whole of worry by proper thinking and planning. See, what you need to actualize vision at first is not money. Every genuine vision that is of God will always enjoy provision. We always enjoy what? Provision. Unless it's not from God. Unless it's an ambition. And inside that vision God has given to you is your welfare. Is your where what? Welfare. welfare. Listen to this. A man without a vision is a man without a future. I come again. A man said, a wise man said, a man without a vision is a man without a future. Stop writing, look at me. Stop living your life like the general public. You see, what vision does for you is that which vision gives you class? We can be doing the same thing, but what makes me outstanding is the vision I have. The what? The vision. The vision. Everybody can sing, but what makes you a standing singer, a minister in music, is the vision. Receive grace. Amen. I thought you say better, Amen. amen. I say receive grace. Amen. When God created man, the first thing he gave man was vision. Was what? Vision. Not why vision. What's his assignment? You are blessed. Amen. Listening to this. This one, this one is heavy. Without vision for your life, you return to your past. You return to your past. Everybody has a past. Everybody has what? Every, you have where you are coming from. Before you give your life to Christ, everybody has a past. What keeps you pressing forward is vision. If you don't have vision, you return. You what? You return. You return. You return to your past. That's why you see people. You say, but this guy was hot now. He's a prayer warrior in church. Blah, 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 blah. But now he's smoking. When he became prayer warrior, he never said to the purpose why God created him. Because you know why? Vision is an energizer, natural energizer. You see, Paul was speaking. He said, though our outward man perish, our inner man is renewed day by what? Day. Now, that day by day is talking about vision. It's vision. You see, when you catch the reason why God created you, naturally energy surges. Energy what? Even though there is no money in your pocket, you are happy because you know very soon you still arrive. You still arrive. You are blessed. I say you are blessed. Benefit of vision as we begin to round up. Benefit of vision. One, vision gives you confidence. Men of vision are confident men. Are what? Confident men. You see, two, vision gives you speed. Vision gives you speed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Three. Vision gives you peace. Four. Vision gives prosperity. The only man that is permitted to prosper is a man with vision. You will prosper. 
I said, you will prosper. I said, you will prosper. I said, you will prosper. I said, you will prosper. Let's read the scriptures we close. Abacock chapter 2 verse 2. Thank you, Lord. Are you blessed tonight? Yes, sir. Abacock chapter 2 verse 2. Let's read from screen. Let's read together. And the Lord answered me and said, Now hold on. I told you how you get vision. He went to pray. And in the place of prayer, in I said, the Lord answered me and said, write what? The vision. That established the fact that every genuine vision must be written down. You have to write it down. You don't just say it. You write it. You write it. He said, the Lord answered me and said, write what? The vision. And make it what? Plain upon tables. The word make it plain upon tables talked about know the details. That was where I talked about the foresight, the what? Insight. And what? The hindsight. Make it plain upon tables. That he may what? Run that what? Read it. If you don't write anything, there will be nothing to run with. It is what you write down. That they run with. Verse 3. I want to show you something. Where a lot of people are bothered. Verse 3. Let's read verse 3. Abacus 2, 3. Quickly. For the vision is yet for an appointed what? Time. Now, that is vision actualization. There's a specific time for that. But before the time, what do you do? That's where a lot of people are confused. I, I will come back there. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the what? End. He shall what? Speak. And not what? Lie. Though he what? Tarry. Wait for it. Every genuine vision is worth waiting for. Vision does not speak at the beginning. It speaks where? At the end. At every genuine vision. You see, any vision that speaks at the beginning is ambition. Sometimes the vision will be bigger than your pocket. By the end, it will speak. It will speak at the end. It doesn't speak at the beginning. Somebody say, okay, as we just start the church, somebody give me 10 million. Now lie. Even when you just start the church, your mother would cry for you. Say, which kind of nonsense? But after you graduate from school, now what do you want to use your life for? But at the end, Yanama, it shall speak. It shall speak. It will speak. Amen. You have the vision to be the best fashion house in town. It will speak. You have the vision to have the best company, engineering company, it will speak. Amen. You have the vision to put up a concert that people will fly abroad everywhere, it will speak. Amen. Somebody say it will speak. Say it louder. Shout it louder. When will it speak? At the end. At the end, it will speak. Have you been blessed tonight? Have you got something tonight? This is just a greeting. You know. Tomorrow will be thicker. Tomorrow will be thicker. I'm telling you, line up on line, precept upon precept. Tomorrow will be a thicker. This is just what we'll be dwelling on these three days. Vision. The di vision dynamics. You will just go back and know that you are too strong to fail. Am I speaking to a church here? You are too solid to fail. You are too solid. You are too solid. Rise up on your faith. Rise up on your feet. Everybody hold your hands. Let's hold our hands together. We're going to pray. Just simple prayer and we're out of this place. Ah. Ask the Lord to open your eyes. <laughs> Ask the Lord to open your eyes. 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 Mengrataka panga songratiga papa ronda kimo zana mai rakto sashali gibrahala mamba zigo brahala konza shagi baranai oh hallelujah go ahead and pray mensko vaziga brai zege brahala monto so shahilma nangre dege so so kali baria bandonza 
Mengredige sushaligi buraniba ha. Raska biba kosha ha. Ngredige kumbredige sukritige sushaligi buranami. Angredige sushaligi vaha. Ask the Lord to open your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Seek a pranamai.